everyone here. In this video, I'd like to briefly talk about my PhD, which I was able to get at 27, and also about how I was able to get at such a young age. Actually, I worked about a year after my college and before pursuing my graduate school. Otherwise, I would have gotten my PhD at 26. Here's my dissertation, and here I am defending my thesis. For those who are wondering my major, I learned biotechnology in my college and uh, neuroscience in my graduate school. I started my master's at UBC Vancouver 2012. That's the year I came to Canada. At that time, it felt so unreal because I never had been in another country before that. And I defended my c suits in March 2017. Sorry. It's okay. I defended my dissertation in March 2017 and officially graduated as a PhD in May that year. I personally think that getting a PhD is not something everybody needs, but it's something that I wanted to do. And I think it's up to what one wants to achieve in his or her life. If you want to be successful in business, you don't need a PhD. Or on the extreme side, you don't even need a degree at all. However, if you want to be a scientist, you better have a doctorate degree, unless you are self-funding your research. Here's a list of reasons I think why I was able to get my PhD at that age, spending 4.5 years without a master's degree. First of all, I wanted to do my PhD and do all other cool stuff later in my life. I started with my master's and transferred to PhD program after a year. I remember once my PhD supervisor told me that her husband, who is a professor next door, told her that, yeah, definitely keep Cowan for PhD. I know I wanted to do my PhD and uh, that probably because how my family and uh, my friend told me about it. A lot of top students in my major went abroad and got their PhDs. I kind of took it as my default goal, but there are a few downsides about it, and I'll talk in my future video. Subscribe to my channel, that way you won't miss it. So I knew that I would get a PhD, and I went for it without much hesitation. That was the number one reason. I think the second reason is that I was working so hard, and uh, I was basically living in the lab. My supervisor once jokingly said during a lab meeting, you know, Carolyn is basically living in the lab. Yes, that was my life. I didn't have a girlfriend until 2014. So it was very less social life. Even later when I have a girlfriend, we were in a long distance relationship. So there was not much time we would spend together. I'll talk about my long distance relationship story in my future video. So, subscribe to my channel. It was hard for both of us and we have gone through it. And uh, we are currently happily living in Toronto. I worked quite hard. There was a time in the summer, probably in 2015, when I worked 10 to 12 hours a day, seven days a week for three months straight. The only time I would go out was going to grocery shopping. Every day it's like, 8 a.m., get up, get a shower, get an easy breakfast, go to the lab, prepare my solution, prepare my equipment, start recording from those neurons or tissue slides in a dish, 1 p.m., go out, get some lunch, come back to the lab, continue recording, 6 p.m., go out, get some dinner, come back to the lab, continue recording or taking pictures for my fluorescent cells up to 10 p.m. or 12 a.m go home, brush my teeth, wash my face, and sleep. Next day, do the same thing again. It was a bit extreme, but my normal routine was not much far away from this. I'm lying if I say I enjoyed it 100%. It was definitely not 100% joyful experience. There were hard times when the experiments were not working, as well as good times when the experiments were working and results are promising. Most of the time, experiment went smooth. That's because our lab is quite established lab. 
We don't often try very new things that would most likely to fail. Some lab members in the lab say, Cowan is a data machine. <laughs> of course, that's a joke. Yes, I was able to produce a whole a lot of data for my publication, like a machine that never stops and didn't have much leisure time. Of course, I was definitely not a machine. I was also putting a lot of time into reading, writing, analyzing data, and drawing graphs, besides doing all these experiments. One summer, my girlfriend was in Vancouver. We went up to one of the beautiful mountains in the north of the city. Here are a few pictures and clips we have taken during the trip to the mountain. They, they are beautiful. We, a group of UBC students and family, were walking up in the mountain. Unexpectedly, we met a postdoc from our lab there who was also hiking. She said, oh, Carolyn, finally you come out of the lab. That was how crazy I was working. Luckily, I was able to publish eight articles in peer-reviewed journals as a result and got a postdoc position in a top lab in Canada. Well, later I left academia to get into business after a short postdoc. That was a bit of an experience. I'll talk about it in the future. Subscribe to hear about that. If you are enjoying this video, please click that like button and smash that subscribe button for YouTube algorithm. Also, if you have questions or comments, leave it down below. I will read and reply each of them. I guarantee. If you have anything you want me to talk about, leave down below too. I would love to hear what you are interested in hearing. Third, I think I was lucky. I was lucky that I had a supervisor and a lab full of supportive people who really helped me along the way. If they didn't provide me enough support, I wouldn't be successful enough to graduate that early. So big thank you to my supervisor and to my prior lab members. Thank you very much. Without your help, it was really impossible. This is where luck plays a role and one can hardly control. The fourth reason, also the last reason I think, is that I really wanted to finish this early and move on to the next level of the game. It probably is me. I'm probably is a very competitive person. I always wanted to be the best and finish the greatest things in the shortest period of time and get the best awards. Of course, over the years, I wasn't always the best in the group, but I was able to get a number of awards and recognitions, including a PhD four-year award, which enabled me to pay all my PhD tuition as well as my living expenses during my PhD. I think these are four major elements that played the main role in me getting a PhD at 27. Pursuit without hesitation, hardworking, supportive environment, and luck. In my future video, I'll talk about what a PhD life looked like in a more general way, not specific to me. Once again, if you have enjoyed this video, please click that like button, smash that subscribe button for YouTube algorithm. Also, if you have any questions and comments, please leave down below. I'll read and reply each of them, guaranteed. If you have anything you want me to talk about, please leave down below too. I would love to hear what you are interested in hearing. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel.